Time-sensitive networking. Everybody seems to be on the bandwagon for time-sensitive networking. I seem to be the only one that's not on the bandwagon. And today I'd like to talk about the case against time-sensitive networking. So what is time-sensitive networking? Well, first, I'm John Rinaldi from Real-Time Automation. And I'm going to take this position today that a lot of people aren't going to like. Because uh, everybody wants to push this forward for some reason. And I just can't figure out what the advantage is. So what is time-sensitive networking? Well, it's IEEE 802.1Q if you're interested, and it's really just another data link layer to move messages around. It's like the IP layer uh, on Ethernet. So it's a, it's a special link layer, and it essentially what it does is that it schedules traffic. So it makes sure that message this message gets to this device at, the, at this particular time, these other messages get to these other devices on time, and so on. So it's a way of essentially creating determinism in a network. Um, and so there's a lot of people, plus it, it, and the big, the big thing is that you, for time-sensitive networking is to bring both IT and OT together. That's, the, that's one of the, the pieces about this is that it allows that any IT device can talk to OT, any OT device because everything's going to be on the same network. Well, I have a particular opinion about this. I think that this is both silly and I think it's dangerous. Not going to win me a lot of friends, but that's what I think. I think it's silly and dangerous. Where does this stuff come from? Well, the idea, it really comes from the automotive market. Autonomous vehicles need time-sensitive networking. And I understand that, and I believe that that's, that's the right approach for a vehicle. We're talking about hundreds of sensors on, to, on a car for it to run autonomously. They need to have ne uh, a network that's going to deliver messages deterministically because you got we made to make sure that you're, you're, you're protecting the occupants of the car. You don't want to get in into an accident. So that makes sense. But that's a domain in which the designers know every message. They got this sensor over here, that sensor over there. They know exactly where they got to go and they know exactly the timing for those messages so they can program the network to deliver the messages in the right, in, in the right sequence. There's other kinds of, of domains just like that where everything's well known and you can do it. But we're talking about general automation where you don't know what all the devices that are going to be put on there I don't think it works nearly as well. So I think this is really silly and dangerous, and I got six reasons off the top of my head that I can think of that it's, that, that, that it's silly and dangerous. One, in, it's security. What's the biggest risk to a network? The biggest risk to a network is going to be the IT network, the biggest risk to a control network is the IT network. That's where the hackers are. It's, there's hundreds of ways for hackers to get into IT networks. Hundreds. And they're constantly getting in. And the, and the IT people are always trying to figure out who's, who's, who's on the network that's not supposed to be. Oh, when you join IT to OT, now you're just inviting these people saying, hey, you, you've got free reign to, to come into all our control devices and figure out what control devices you can attack. How does that make any sense to, 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 to increase the exposure of your OT devices to hackers? I just don't think that makes any sense at all. The second thing is the scheduler. Okay, so we've got all these devices. We've got all these devices that have this certain timing to get from here to there to everywhere. And they all have a TSN chip in them. Something has to look at all the traffic and figure out this message has to go through this switch, this router, and it has to arrive over here at this particular point in time. This other one has to go, is going to go through these two switches, these three routers, and then, and then through the switch to arrive over here at the same time. That is an incredible computational problem to take all of that information in and try to figure out how to schedule that network. Nobody is building that scheduler. Everybody wants to build TSN chips. And I tell you what, if I was in the chip building business, I would build a TSN chip and I would say, everybody's got to put my TSN chip in a device too. That's where the money is. There's no money in this scheduler. Every single example of TF TSN I've ever seen it all, it's always the same thing. They've pre-programmed, hand-coded these, 
the, all of the routings that are all in all the switches and routers, all of that timing is, pre, pre, is done by hand. I've never seen one that uses a scheduler to figure all that out. It's just, it's just silly. Third thing is let's talk about addressing. Right now, if you have machine A, it's got a PLC and it's got a bunch of devices and, and then what we, and machine B, exactly identical machine that's got a PLC and a bunch of devices. We, we, what we typically do is we put these, we use the same addresses for all of these devices. So that way, if, you, if you've got, and sometimes this is repeated like 15 times for 15 different lines. You make a change, you find out that, hey, we've got a bug in this PLC program. You can just roll it out to all of these other ones because these are all 192, 168.100.1 through 150. Same thing over here, same thing over here 12 times. You could roll the same PLC program out. You can't do that when you combine IT and OT. Now we lose that ability to do that. Now if you make a change in this PLC program, you go and physically have to make the change diff over here because this program's different because these addresses are different because everything's on the same network. It doesn't make any sense. The addressing, is, the addressing becomes a lot more difficult when, you're, when you have IT, OT converged. So that doesn't work. That, that makes things harder. The other thing is, you got the same technology, but we use it differently. The OT world uses things like embedded networks. It uses ring networks. That stuff's anathema to an IT person. They don't want a, a, a switch. They don't want 50 devices hanging off a switch. That doesn't make any sense to them. So how is that, how is that fit into this OT, IT convergence stuff? We, and we do that because it saves money. You don't have to put a lot of switches out there. You don't need to have 50 points. You just have a, a connected to switches. You just have one switch port that has 50 devices on it. You don't have rings in, in the IT networks. In fact, they go to incredible lengths to make sure that they don't have any rings. But those ring networks are important to a lot of manufacturing applications. So it, it, there's this, and that list goes on and on. We use the same technology, but we use it in different ways. When you try to bring it together to do, do TSN, it just doesn't make any sense how this is going to fit. Cost. We're going to have to we're going to have to redo all these devices and add a TSN chip to that. What's all that going to cost? Is that how, is that actually going to save us money? Well, no, of course not. What's going to happen is people are going to have switches that are TSN capable that have standard Ethernet ports on them. So we're going to use today's devices and talk to those switches with the same device we have today. So we're not going to, there's not going to be that massive amount of chips being sold. So the prices aren't going to come down. So there's not going to be any incentive for this manufacturer to change this device and put a TSN chip in it. So I don't see how this is going to work. I really don't see how it's going to work. Now, the other thing is, so, so you have a cost. It's not going down. The other thing is you have a, uh, you know, who's in charge? Who? Who's going who's who's to solve problems when there's a network problem? Are the technicians we have today on the factory floor going to be able to look at a network, a TSN network that has all these IT devices, all these OT devices, it's all on the same network? How the heck are they going to figure out what the problem is and what they should do about it? Are we going to say, okay, those, can, those guys all have to now become IT guys with advanced training and being able to decode and understand IT networks? You know, is it still control engineers that have to figure this out? Is it IT guys that now are, are responsible for figuring out problems? If there's the machine's not running, who's in charge? Because the network now is everybody's network. When it's everybody's network, it's nobody's network. So there's a, there's a huge, I think that's not going to work. So all in all, I see no reason why this isn't just silly and dangerous. And I, I can't understand, well, I do understand, there's, you know, people won't think they can make money on these chips. That's really what it is. It's really the autonomous EV market is really where they want to, you know, is really where they're focusing. But, they've, but there's a lot of people who want to push this out to general automation. And I think that is just silly and dangerous and don't do it. If you want to hear more, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to have you know, have you tell me why you think that this is a great idea. So you got my, there's my email, you can leave a comment on the video,
contact me directly. I'd like to hear more about why I should be supporting this. So thank you very much. My name is John Rinaldi with Real-Time Automation. Have a great day.